Technego has undergone a drastic transformation over time. From a regional industrial hub to one of the most polluted city in the country, to a city that now is known to be a living lab for smart city research. Today, I want to tell you the story of how Chattanooga, as a mid-sized city in southeast Tennessee, along the Tennessee River in the foothills of Appalachian Mountains, became a living lab for smart city. The site was established in 1800s, and the name was changed to Chattanooga in 1834, which means a rock rising to a point. It's speculated that it refers to the Lookout Mountain around the city of Chattanooga. The city's economy was growing and it became, the growth would became stimulated when the railroad industry started in 1830s and 1840s. Between 18, mid 1800 and mid 1900, Chattanooga was a regional hub for manufacturing and industry. It was producing and manufacturing stills, saddlery parts, automobile parts, and appliances. The city was growing, so was the economy and population. The entrepreneurship was also there. Examples of that, we can talk about Dixie and Coca-Cola Bottling Company. The manufacturing grew, but also it left a scar on the city. It was not expected. The rise in manufacturing increased the pollution. That led to population going down. Local economy was not strong enough and was not strong anymore. In fact, the city in 1969 was named the dirtiest city in the country. The city hit its bottom. When it was at its lowest, a group of dedicated people decided to stay to innovate, to invest. They were looking at it from a high level to see which decision they can make that it can revitalize the city. And to do that, they were looking for applications that would have impact on the local community. Chattanooga is surrounded by beautiful natural resources. So the project they chose as the first project was Tennessee River Park. This beautiful trail goes along the Tennessee River. Those of you that have walked or hiked or ran on that trail, you know that this is 11 mile stretch of the trail in downtown area along the river. And you can go on that without having to step on any paved road. Another example of that was the aquarium that was built in downtown area. This group had bold visions. They took bold steps to completely change the urban. They brought the sense of urban to downtown area. They did a lot of effort to clean the air, to clean the water, to make urban livable and enjoyable. While innovation was definitely there, technology and entrepreneurship was still missing in branding of Chattanooga. That was changed when EPB installed fiber optic throughout the city as a backbone for the telecommunication. That is when EPB brought Chattanooga to the age of high speed, to the information age. They installed 9,000 miles of fiber that would provide access to every house and every businesses in the 600 square mile territory of EPB that provide internet up to 10 gigabit per second at tens of times faster than national average. The gig provided opportunities for Chattanooga to be able to develop applications that it will change completely the way that to do conduct business, to learn, to live and play. And that also provided opportunities for entrepreneurship to reappear in Chattanooga. Geek Tank is an example of that. Geek Tank is a boutique 
accelerator for startups to develop business applications that can thrive on low latency and fast internet. They bring a cohort of high-tech companies here to Chattanooga. In fact, Chattanooga is the only city in the country that a startup company can test their ideas in a community-wide fiber optic. It was around this time that it was decided future is not about technology. Future is about people. Whenever we talk about smart city, the word smart in smart city resonates as sensor, internet of things, connectivity, data, artificial intelligence. Why that is true, it's not the end of it. The human factor should be behind every project that it's done in smart city. In fact, technology should facilitate application that can improve the quality of life. But in, a, in order to, be, to do that, we need to make sure that community talk to each other. They talk to people. We break the silos between departments and municipalities. We know what are the challenges and issues. We need to think about it. Can research solve those issues? More importantly, can it be implemented? Will those solutions be adopted by citizens? And that is when Chattanooga Smart Community Collaborative was born. In fact, that's the latest community effort that's happening in Chattanooga. It consists of seven entities, City of Chattanooga, Hamilton County, EPB, the Enterprise Center, Colab, which is the startup um, incubator, the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga, Erlanger Health Systems. The goal for the collaborative is to, through collaboration and through new tools and technologies, we will be able to look at the city through new lens. There are a lot of efforts going on through this collaborative but I'm going to be talking about ones that are related to mobility, safety, and quality of life. About two years ago at UTC, the Center for Urban Informatics and Progress, CUIP, was established. We are living in the urbanization century. It's expected by 2050, which is only 30 years from now, two thirds of population living in urban environment. It has its own challenges and its own opportunities. The goal at CUIP is to address these challenges. We want to make urban livable, accessible, healthy for all. At CUIP, we do applied researches, research that would contribute to the smart city research body, as well as improve the community of life. It would contribute to the local community. And we are working on different areas health, energy, mobility, social science. And we're going to talk about a couple of them today. Which city doesn't want to reduce their number of crashes? In fact, numbers are showing that the number of accidents in Tennessee and in Hamilton County, as well as the number of fatalities, have been growing over the past few years. 911 data is an open source data that everyone can have access to it. We wanted to see that. What does these numbers tell us? What can we do with these numbers and how can we use them to remedy these issues? We drew them with respect to time. We aggregate data and we looked at them based on the time of the day for every day of the week. The trend clearly shows the number of accidents goes up during the rush hour. And the number of accidents during the weekday is more than the weekends. In fact, it even shows us the rush hour on Fridays, it starts at 4 p.m. The other thing we wanted to look at was, how about spatially? So we look at the data according to space. And as you can see here, this shows the number of aggregated accidents that happen at each space, changing over the time. Clearly, there is a trend there. 
At the same time, we talked about this, that perhaps everybody knows accidents are happening on the, where accidents are happening on interstates, and there are more accidents there, and also everybody probably knows where are these accidents happening, where are the exact locations on the interstates. So we wanted to look at more of a local intersections that they were having a high number of accidents. They were hot spots for accidents and crashes. What you can see here is a residential street that has a speed limit of 35. In the larger region, there has been 88 accidents in the past two years. And in that exact spot, there has been 22 accidents. This is a objective and unbiased data. Why we are data scientists? We're not necessarily traffic engineers or urban planners. So through Collaborative, we reached out to the Smart City Director of City of Chattanooga. Through the discussions with him, we realized that the pole was the reason for the car accidents. The pole was too close to the road. By moving it ever so slightly, there has been no accidents since June 2019. This is a project that has a real impact on community. We are saving lives, we are saving resources, serve, saving property, and also we are saving human cost here. But these are the things that we can learn based on historical data. The question is, can we do prediction? Can we predict where are gonna be the accidents on a Thursday rainy afternoon? And that's what we decided to do. We looked at the data. The 911 data is openly available. We also looked at road geometries. How is the curvature of the road? How many lanes there are there? Are there sidewalks there? Are there crosswalks there? What kind of pavement is there? And we also look at the weather. At the time of accident, was it raining? Was it foggy? Or was it a clear sunny day? We put all these data together and we built a predictive model. What you see here is a prediction that we have done on the accidents for January 20th, 2020. We used the data up to January 19th to predict where are going to be the accidents on January 20th. And what you see, the hexagons show the areas that have the chance of accidents. The bluer the color, the higher rate accident, the higher chance of accident happening there. On January 21st, we got the data from 911 County and we looked, we overlaid them. And you can see that we can predict with a high accuracy of where the accidents potentially can happen. One of the immediate applications for this is we can allocate first responders according to this prediction. We all know that the faster the response, the lower, the lower the fatality rates and also property damage. So we talked about vehicles. What about pedestrians? What about cyclists? Even if you drive to your office, you still have to park and perhaps cross the street to get to your office. Or you go for a cup of coffee or go for lunch. You still have to walk or bike. We wanted to also see how it are, how safe are our roads? Where are the hot spots of accidents for pedestrians and cyclists? Because we have seen the fatality rates that were related to car crashes for pedestrians are also rising. To be able to do that, we need to answer some questions. How and when a, a pedestrian would use a given sidewalk? How how are they going to be using different crosswalks? How long do they have to wait to be able to cross that intersection? Because if you have to wait a long time to cross, perhaps you're going to jaywalk. The same thing for vehicles. How long do they have to wait to, before they can cross the intersection? Because if it's going to be too long, then they're going to be more aggressive. The answer to these questions would give us actionable data that we can look into to evaluate the safety for pedestrians and cyclists. But unlike the 911 data, this data doesn't exist. So through Collaborative, 
we actually built a test bed in downtown Chattanooga. Those of you that are from Chattanooga recognize this street. This is Martin Luther King Boulevard in downtown. We have built a test bed, which is a mile and a quarter road stretch of the boulevard here. And we chose this because it has a bike lane. It has bike share station, EV charging station. It has a transit. It's next to campus. There's a lot of walking and biking activities happening there. It also has residential and businesses. So it kind of represents the small version of the urban. We equipped different intersections with different sensors, such as cameras. We have high resolution cameras that we can detect the objects. What we care about is this is a car, a person, a bus. We do not care about the personally identifiable data there. We also have LIDAR there that would be able to give us the distance in a high resolution. We have audio sensor. Perhaps we can use it to hear siren and be able to empty the street so emergency vehicle can pass through faster. There are also 5G and fiber for being able to transmit data with low latency. And finally, we have also edge computing for applications that require processing fast and right on the spot. What you see here is one of the cameras on the test bed. We have been collecting the data. We have been using computer vision to detect the objects. And after collecting them over a period of time, what you see at the bottom here is a hit map of the objects that have been seen on the test bed over a period of time. Pink shows where the pedestrian are. It makes a perfect sense that on the sidewalk is we see a lot of pink. Also next to the parking spots, we see pink because people park their car and get out of their car. But we also see there are some jaywalking activity. There are some, we've been seeing that there's some crossing happening at non-designated areas. We also see that there are places that the cars and buses are getting too close to the bike lane. Using this, we will be able to evaluate the safety of our streets. Similar to the previous case, these are history data. What about prediction? Can we do any prediction here? What you see in this video shows us where is every object going to be in the next couple of seconds? So if I know the person that is crossing, where is going to be in the next couple of seconds? And where the vehicle going to be in the next couple of seconds? Then we can measure the time to collision. If that is too small, that should be a warning for the driver as well as the pedestrian or the cyclist. Using this, we can collect where are the places in the city that we are seeing a lot of near misses, which basically means the accident didn't happen, but it was about to happen. And knowing those areas can improve the safety of our streets. So in summary, this happened in Chattanooga because a dedicated group of people decided to stay, invest, and innovate. Same choices are happening today. We can see that the innovation and investment that happened in the collaborative, in CUIP, the test bed that we just talked about. Even in the past few years, we have seen how Smart City had positive outcome in our community. The collaborative is involved in a lot of other projects in addition to what I talked about related to mobility. They're doing projects in energy, in health, equity, social science, and more. These efforts that are ongoing will take Chattanooga to the next level. Perhaps some of these can also be used in other communities. They can be adopted by other communities as well. Thank you.